Hmm. Right. That crashed last time. Hey, this is Jupiter Exile, and we're back to Elden Ring RL1. We are theoretically somewhere near the home stretch of the game. Right now, we're trying to cheese out a particularly um, difficult boss. I'm just going to get right back to doing that. How did he... Oh, right, I got armor that does damage for rolling. Pop off here. I think I've been using rune arcs on this, but I'm not going to use one right away. I'm still going to use crab meat, though. Oh, that's interesting. The rune arc animation is interrupted if I fall down, but the... Um, the crab animation is not. I need him to throw one more fireball. So a lot of this fight is coming down to whether or not I can actually get this guy to get bogged down on terrain, or if he just decides spontaneously that he would like to not get bogged down on terrain. It's been pretty obnoxious, but hey, whatever. Okay. We've got the rot inflicted. Got some lag going on. That'll kill us. So I need to better understand how the charge on the dragon breaths work. Uh, it seems as though there's both a charge input and then, like, a use it longer. I think from here out, I'm just going to try taps on the ability and see how it goes. Nope. Ouch. All right. Hope that flask use is not important to this fight. I'm not going to have it now. like for him to choose to fling a fireball. This might be too far away. Worked out. Okay. He's certainly afflicted with rot. And for this uh, segment, I don't want to get both of them rotted. After he's come back to life, I don't really mind getting both of them rotted. Because we can try to deplete their two health bars at about the same time. I think that, um... Seems to me like your uh, goal statement for this fight is either kill... Is, is, I think you have to rack up about three or four total kills. given the speed at which the health bars uh, seem to go down. All right, that can happen sometimes. But you know, it was either sit on that platform to not get killed by roly-poly, or just get killed by roly-poly. So, eh. Uh, let's see. The Star Scourge heirloom is not really adding to this. I don't need that extra strength very much. The Faith is certainly helpful here. And I need the Arc for the Incant scaling. 
I think I can lose the five faith in favor of the dragon crest to offset the damage taken from the two seals. Because I think the extra health loss is uh, causing pretty noteworthy survivability issues. The fact that you can use both sore seals is already pretty crazy. I need to get through the door before this. I'm just going to do a single tap. Yeah, okay, so if it's a single tap, it'll take two taps to get the rot effect off. That did it for the rot, and uh, we managed to get... Um, okay, so two taps of the ability is what we need either way, and we have enough survivability sur to survive the slow stab. So I think using the um, bigger batter version, uh, like holding it down is probably never necessary. Slip your bounds. I am dead. I absolutely hate the way that role interacts with the environment. That interaction holds back this entire fight for me. I also don't know how I uh, took two hits from the roll. As opposed to just uh, one hit of it and then getting knocked down. Who knows how this works? Okay, uh, my lock-on just changed and wouldn't change back. Super fun. I love to experience all the cracks in the programming at a, uh, at a late-game fight. Nah, I get it. It's because, uh, it's because I'm line-of-sighting them. But I don't know how I'm supposed to do anything else when they both have ranged attacks. Like, who's responsible for that? <laughs> They both have ranged attacks. They both independently go to a phase two where they cover the arena and all sorts of nonsense. Elden Ring definitely has a feeling of them, like, not quite knowing when to stop.
I was thinking for possibly, uh, of possibly going for Rod on both of them for a bit there, but, eh. For, like, a simultaneous kill or something. Just a highly temperamental encounter. Yeah, like, this guy's gonna come up on me, and I really... Like, for that phase change attack, I have no flexibility in where I'm going in the room or what I'm doing. So I just have to be point blank with, like, an enemy who's four times as aggressive and damaging as old school Ornstein. Play the waiting game. We get a lot of lag here. Okay, so now he's going to phase up. He made sure to get out the uh, second summon before he did, though, like a jerk. And that's going to walk into and kill me. Uh, okay. So with the fat guy completely dead and the skinny guy down to half, uh, they're half killed. So I have to kill... Half killing the skinny guy. Okay, so... I think it's gonna be basically two and a half kills, is what I need to manage. Unless I can get the two kills to happen simultaneously. Um, given how much of this fight is a crapshoot, I think I'm gonna have to try and go for the simultaneous kill. Um, and that's not gonna happen unless I get them both rotted initially, and then manage to ice breath them down. Uh, during, like, the phase transition before they get to summon the other guy back. So, let's try and line them up for a nice big rough rep. Of course, there, my rot breath didn't even, like, line up on them correctly. Jeez. Hmm. Unless maybe I could try out like a sleep setup with the Sword of St. Trina.
come a long way in terms of my plans for this run from the initial point where I wanted it to be like melee only the whole thing all the way ah. like so many of these fights are just very miserable to do uh, just the balance of the game is very very different from the way uh, the balance used to be so I'm not concerned anymore any clever trick to kill the boss it's all fine The, the initial reason for doing a no magic restriction is because back in Dark Souls 1, the Pyromancy SL1 run is not even a, a very serious challenge run. Uh, by the end of the run, you are a fully powered character who can kill boss with a single spell cast. Yeah, I'm gonna, I have to. I have to still give up on the uh, full poison breath because whenever I commit to rot breath, they shift to a more aggressive behavior. Like they know that I'm uh, trying to do a committal spell. <clears throat> so I'm gonna try and rot breath them both. and then probably frost breath them both. If I can actually get them to group up and not murder me. It's like Ornstein and Smo, but they're both Ornstein. When the saving grace of that fight is that one of them is, like, kind of predictable. Please stop changing my... It keeps changing my lock-on without me actually inputting anything on the controller. The big one's rotten. Small, small guy is not. That should be rot on both of them. It is not rot on both of them. Small guy's still not rotten. camera keeps doing this awesome courtesy of, um... of removing one of them from my perception half the time. Not a second rolling attack! Okay. Getting both of them rotten and killing both of them at once is absolutely the answer to this fight. Um, I just have to deal with their simultaneous phase twos and things getting really random. And for some reason, I'm getting a ton of lag, so I'm going to close some other programs because it's getting super infuriating to me. And I haven't even playing. I haven't even been sitting down to the game that long, and I'm already getting like really ticked off at like lag happening and uh, like 
camera junk that is ripping my focus away from the things I need to pay attention to. Let's just respawn. Because when you're playing evasive and there's an obstacle that interposes itself between you and the boss, the game likes to unlock you from things when there's an obstacle. And this room has six very necessary obstacles because there's no effing way you can actually, like, evade this attack while another guy is attacking you. This pose, I think I can get them both. Yeah, I'm basically looking to get lucky on their behaviors like four times in a row. One rod is out. Both rotted. here. Yep, he just wanted to be more aggressive and he didn't, like, take enough damage. So I should have run away there. Hmm. Because I can't, uh, I cannot contest or even actually go terribly close to the, um, 
Actually, isn't there an item that specifically improves the uh, power of roars? I think there is. Let me check on that. So I think I need my uh, ice breath to hit a bit harder to actually get the kill during a transition. Let's see. Uh, enhances charge, spells, and skills. Try that. One rod of the other isn't. He's going to phase change very soon. I don't know what happened with the other one that he decided to be peaceful for so long. It's very out of character. His phase change, I think, will stop him from summoning too soon. There's a summon. I think I can kill him right here. No. No. Just boxed into a corner by the stupid windmill attack. I didn't rot them both at the same time initially. Okay. Um, so this might actually be working. Uh, let me see. I think this was the other one. Roars and breath attacks. So let's try this. So we've just got really, really crunk uh, roar and breath weapons. Pump this up through the friggin' roof. I'm not sure if the charging bit works or not. Um, but the roars say they can be charged, so I think that it might be enhancing the roar if I hold it down for the second, like, half of it. Or the... not the... Uh, not the roar, but the breath, rather. Yeah, I can get one shot now. Hmm. Um, let me try... Hold on, I'm gonna swap one of these back out for the shield, the ritual shield. Change this one for the ritual shield.
All right, here we go. I need at least one of them to commit to something. They are losing the rot meter that I uh, very much need them to have. Bit of lag there. They don't want to group up. Currently, one of those kills me. Um, is that because I've got two sore seals on? That didn't kill me last fight, I don't think. Alright. That attempt was not panning out. Far and away. Not working. I'm guessing that since I'm eating the crab, the physical attacks won't kill me, but other stuff might. I back rolled into furniture. Yay! They couldn't get out of the way of the attack. The arena's cluttered, but it's not reliable clutter. It's, it's hard to pin down all the reasons why I really don't like this, and I think Ornstein and Smo is actually an excellent fight. Honestly, I think a lot of it comes back to the fact that the, tra the phase transition attacks for these guys are just not fair when you have to worry about both of them. I can't get them to move. I can't get them to move closer together. But they're still dangerous across the room because they throw fireballs. I think the, the only other duo in Dark Souls that I can think of that throws a ranged attack at all is, um... Well, there's, like, the Yarnum Shades in... Uh, there's the Yarnum Shades in Bloodborne. But the Yarnum Shades can be countered, they have low poise, and they don't start doing their crazy stuff until you've almost killed or actually killed one of them. And they don't come back. Plus, their arena is big and uncluttered. It has one notable obstacle that you can exploit, instead of, like, six obstacles that don't even really like to cooperate.
Okay, the fact that the earlier fire breath killed, uh, fireball killed me, but this one didn't, is super weird. And I'm guessing it's because I must have had a sliver of health missing last time. I don't understand how that happened. Or the fireball loses power as it's in travel. I don't know which of those things is, like, uh, more or less egregious. Or the skinny one's fireballs are stronger. I don't know. All of these things are equally offensive to my brain. Yeah. We're dead. Hmm. I got one shot through the obstacle. Yeah, it's, that's counter hit damage because I was casting a spell. Because he's got a thrusting weapon and he inflicts counter hit damage. And the multiplier on that counter hit damage is pretty nutty. It's like 20% more. Well, actually, wait. It's 20% more when the player gets counter hit damage. When a boss does counter hit damage, I think it's like absurdly more. I don't know. It's, it's just ridiculous. I'm very nonplussed about the boss design and the uh, about the boss design of the game. It's... There's a lot of these bosses just feel like it's more, more, more. It's just this crazy, exhausting thing. It's like extra insulting because these guys are a copy paste. Oh, that's fine. No, just yeah, that's that's cool. Just don't even bother with locking on, no matter what I do with the buttons. Now you guys want to throw fireballs, Jesus. What what did the camera do there? Like, why did the lock-on change? It's because the guy I was locked onto decided to move behind a pillar while this other dude is up in my face, so it switched the lock-on. But that's not what I wanted to do. Okay, now we've got them both rotted. Ah, oh, 
I didn't see him doing anything, because how the hell could I? I had to psychically know that he was going to do that at that time, and then make the decision to get out of my cover to deal with the fact that he was going to do an attack that covers one quarter of the arena while his other buddy is, like, doing the death roll at me for God knows how long that thing even lasts. Yeah, whatever. I couldn't get them both to sit anywhere, so I die. I got stabbed through a pillar again. And killed, like, through pillars so many times. Why is this crap even in the arena? Just don't even lie to me anymore. Hmm. I actually need to go online and see if people actually have any demonstrations of doing this fight without cheesing it horribly. I'm assuming this fight is not good for a remembrance. I haven't seen a lot of highlights of this. A lot of people who are doing challenge runs are... They're, they're focusing on the remembrance fights in terms of how they construct the challenge. And the remembrance fights have largely been pretty well constructed, generally interesting, not like uh, necessarily super challenging in every single case. Skinny guy keeps stepping outside of the rot, so he's not rotted. Uh, 
I don't have a good vector for getting bleed on these guys. I just literally, like, don't even have a strat for doing that. Uh, I had tried one earlier, but the inconsistencies of fighting them in melee just completely got to me. I'm not really willing to engage with these guys anymore in a legitimate way. Because this stuff happens. Like, it doesn't matter how I kill him or how much I damage I do to him. Because he just, like, slips around the pillar and murders me. The damage he does with that roll's not consistent either. Statistically, that should not be killing me. I don't know what's wrong. I have not been killed by it before, and now it's killing. I have nothing. Earlier, I was using um, a bleed setup with the, um, what's it called? With the Bloodhound Blade, and that was doing a lot of damage. It had good promise. I just can't do that at the same time I'm doing this strat because of the uh, items and the stats. Decide to die this time. Well, I don't get to know yet. That guy over there is going to do his spooky phase change. Mmm, yeah, he's just going to run me down. That was a pretty close one. I've had a couple of close calls now. Okay.
Yeah, the way Fat Man's hitboxes work is just really dumb in this room. It might be really dumb in general, but his earlier iteration, I didn't have to appreciate it all that much. Maybe with a rune arc, he, he doesn't kill. The balancing factor that makes uh, RL1 or SL1 or any of that stuff possible is that there's kind of a fairness to the design of enemies in these games, such that you can beat them without taking a hit. And I feel as though Elden Ring moves away from that design somewhat. The uh, actual attack patterns for a lot of the enemies feel distinctly unfair. Need you to need you two to like hang out for a bit together. Still not rotted. There we go. Tall guy's not rotted. All right. Um, okay, I have no idea what hit me. I should also note that these guys are silent. They have almost no audio cue on any of their attacks. I actually don't know if I have the Swarm of Flies spell. I need to go get that. But that requires me to use a rune arc. Which means I have to bet a rune arc per fight. Because the thing is, I'm just getting killed by getting rolled over by the fat guy's roll half the time. Can I use it with Merica's uh, Scar Seal, uh, Merica's Sore Seal, and a, um... How, how much, how much faith is it? Uh, because I can get up to... 20... 21... without using a Rune Arc. if I've ever survived the whirlwind attack if he decides to do it. Oh, well, phew, I could use that spell without um, without a lot of things. Like, uh, right now, I'm at all 15s with arc 23 with this uh, equipment set. Do you know where that, um, do you know off the top of your head where that spell is? 
I don't think I have it right now. Swarm of flies. I don't know. see. I can go back there. It's not too problematic. It's a very rough area to hang out in, but we can fish around. Uh, I don't need Maricus for a while, so we'll go back to regular walking around set. Shield, Radagon, Star Scourge, and this is the flexible slot. It's the Dragon Crest. Somewhere in the marsh. Let's see. Um the marshy section uh leading into Mogwin's Palace, like the initial area. I don't think I explored that super well, so that's that's worth looking around in. I think this is the area that I've explored the least, because it's got these here, um, birds. That's handy. Whoa. That looks significant. Ah, oh, warrior cookbook. Looks like I'm on fat rolling too right now. Not surprising. I'm generally not able to use this sword with heavy armor. Okay, in a marsh on a corpse. Yeah, I had rushed through a lot of these areas and did not look back. 
because, you know, all the giant skeletons and crows and really nasty other things. Okay, so this would be the area leading up into the uh, place proper. Okay. Probably before this. Is that Diego is everything? That's good to know. Yeah, so this is the run-up that has all of the uh, skeletons and things going on. This is the other area. I did find a Nomad's cookbook. Some of the key items. I think that was the Nomad Nomad's cookbook 22. Might have been this 24. We got swarm pots and roped fly pots, which I'm guessing are the uh, bleeding variant. Swarm pots. Oh, those are easy to make. Somewhat. I can only get the blood tainted excrement from around here. Found the land of the new dynasty. Hmm. The reason why Moog is so stuck on Mikola is that he's looking for the uh, Dawn of the New America. He wants to see him uh, ascend as an Empyrean. Ouch. Okay, I will try and find that in a sec. Blood Rose. Yeah, they've really got a habit of squirreling every last thing away. That's just holy grease. Alright, yeah, probably time to pull up this map, because I think I've got no chance of finding it just by running around. Small cave. Ah, the eastern wall. I thought I had checked those caves. Uh, not this one. It was this one. Okay. I had checked out another cave. I think I had checked out the cave before that and after that, but not that cave itself. Okay, 
just go back to the round table so I can think. Okay. So, game plan or rough thought is we are going to try and just cast flies at the fat one until he falls over, and that will be that. Rot might be involved because the rot breath has been pretty effective, but we'll see. Okay. There we go. Swarm of flies. Yep, 16 arc. Love of faith. With that stat spread, we don't actually even necessarily need a sore seal to equip it. We can get up to 11 faith just by wearing commoner's garb. See, our best bet on incant scaling is going to be, I think, the Dragon Communion Seal either way. It's shown that as long as I have the Silver Tear Mask equipped, the incant scaling on this gets quite high. Right, let's, um, the extra mind from this should be useful, though. equipped in case. Let's see now. Um, there are other things we could equip for extra power, I believe. Check on that. So the Faithful's Canvas Talisman is an option. Uh, we don't get to see uh, Incantation Potency there. The Radagon icon, I think, is going to be a really good idea for shorter cast time. I think the Radagon icon I probably should have been using with the earlier strat anyway. We'll see. Alright. Let's try this out. We just need to try stuff. We just need to get in there and try stuff. I think my concern about the fight is still the fat guy running me over. Also, do we get to know the damage type on this? <clears throat> there it is. Swarm of blood flies. Oh, can be cast while in motion. That's kind of cool. See what we can do with this. Um, but I think our current um, physic is probably not uh, suited to it. We'll keep the faith knot on. We don't have an arc knot or anything like that. I think I'm just going to go with the damage negation because that might improve our chances of surviving certain attacks, especially while we're wearing this light cloth armor. Yeah, well, that's a pretty good test. That being said, we're surviving that by a slightly smaller margin. Tells me that I'll actually be killed by some attacks that weren't killing me before. Although that's without the physic and crab meat. So we'll see. So with this setup, I've got 26 faith, 23 arcane. Let's see what this looks like. Ah, uh, this does require line of sight. Damage is good.
these rot to death. Do me a favor. That should kill him, I think. Okay, so from here, if I half kill both of them, we'll be looking really close. Dicey. like to get them both inflicted with rot and then try my luck with a few more fly swarms. Allocate one more flask over to healing and try that again. Hmm. The flies give me some much needed versatility, so that's good. And it lets me push the fight forward. Actually, I got one more. Um, I think I can get another charge. There we go. All right, that's fine. I think the mixed physic is also right where it needs to be. So I'd like to still try to lead off with Rotten Breath on the fat one. And once I've gotten him rotted, we'll start um, bleeding him. Okay, so if I, since I can move while casting, if I turn away, it won't go out. Which only applies when the lock-on's not working, but hey, it's real, it happens. Okay, they both hit me at the same time, so I got a little screwed. Because this duo needs to have a friggin' ranged attack. For both of them. Blech. That's super cool. That's probably a full rock rep that I can do there. 
Never mind. I think I started this with like 40, um, 40 crab meat, maybe 60. I love that the lock on button, if you're not able to lock on to the enemy for some reason, uh, pivots your camera behind you. That is super cool. kill me but I can't cancel the attack not this one hmm. if he chooses to do anything else he just won't kill me by virtue of the, the damage just won't be enough Still haven't gotten his rot meter up? Jeez. There we go. Now it's landed.
I would like to just stay away from him until he dies of rot. about eight or nine ticks away from death. I don't know. I don't know why the flies didn't proc another bleed on him, honestly. I can't explain how I was confident that would fall short from him. But I, I loosely spaced it out, and I was pretty sure it wasn't going to hit. got my spacing wrong because I rolled back into this again. He's rotted. My run got delayed by a pot on the ground. This pottery stopped me from running away from that attack. I could get my ass kicked by a Briatos for four hours, but this fight is bullshit.
Okay, he's dead. The first time. I need to kill the fat guy at least one more time. Get you rotted while I can do so. was too aggressive. So, in terms of the Dark Souls games, I like Dark Souls 1 and I like Dark Souls 3 because they're very thoughtfully designed games. And I don't like Dark Souls 2, because most of Dark Souls 2 feels pretty thoughtless in terms of the way things are laid out. Elden Ring is, like, selectively thoughtful. You like watching? Can I get my health back? You're just gonna keep throwing fireballs at me. Get some more lights on in the room.
No, lock onto the correct guy. If I can sync them up and rot them both, they'll be very close to dying when the second one goes to half health. Look at this. Look at this crap. And that's a full contingent of... That is a full contingent of about eight Cerulean Flasks with everything landing, with my damage being close to maxed out. Yeah. Like, I cannot do much more damage by virtue of spellcasting in this. Honestly... If I could have just stood on the platform and not gotten hit by his attack, I might have been able to finish him off with some leaping R2s or something, but... This is with faster spellcasting. This is with Phil's... This is with faster spellcasting. So, I think I can do some other things to try and, like, lend me a hand here. Like, I could use some arrows with some statuses, I could throw bombs at them, I could adjust other parts of the build, I could farm rune arcs and do some other stuff. But I'm just tired of this, man. This is just exhausting, and it's kind of dumb. And I think this could be a lot of fun with a leveled up character. But this challenge is so much more ridiculous than it's ever been to accomplish um, that I don't really think I can enjoy myself uh, going for the, the challenge I've been, been aiming for. So I'm going to put this uh, series on hold for a while, and I'm going to find some other games to play and stuff to do on stream. Because, uh, I'm just not enjoying myself right now. Um, I've, I've hit my exhaustion point with some of the elements and bosses that feel like they are copy-pasted. Why didn't I see that? Why couldn't I see that corpse when I jumped over there? It just fades into the background, doesn't it? Yeah, that's about right. So, I'm likely to come back to this later. I think I'm going to do a casual run offline for the game. But I have been playing this for like 80 or 90 hours without really playing anything else at all. So, I think I just want to do give some time to other games. I mean, I've been playing... Uh, Civilization 6 and a bit of Stellaris in, like, my personal time.
but yeah. So, um, this is gonna be it for now for Elden Ring. And, uh, maybe in, maybe in a month or two, I will sit back down to this run. Uh, I'll probably do the game casually in the meantime, and I'll keep the character, like, where he is. But, like, <laughs> even casually, I'm gonna have to play a lot to, uh, get back to this. Get back to something in this vicinity. So, that'll be something for another time. Thanks for tuning in. This has been Shooter Exile. Um, I don't know what I want to do this evening. So I think I'm just going to play offline for a while. Catch you guys on Wednesday with um, something. I'll just be getting into something else.